Today I'm looking at KD couplings. The choices are enormous. And do you know your oversets from your extra long shanks? Stick around, run the intro. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. And this is episode two of three um, couplings videos that I'm putting together. Hopefully you may have seen the last one and there should be a link here and it was all about standard kind of tension lock couplings um, and how we've got to where we are. But this one's all about KD couplings or as some people call them wrongly KDs and the reason is because thanks to Rich S who sent me a charming message um, and Rich S is RWS Baden, that's his, uh, his YouTube uh, uh, name. Um, for those who do not know the company was named after using the initials of the twin brothers, Keith and Dale Edwards, i.e. K for Keith, A for and, D for Dale, E for Edwards, and then they, and for phonetic pronunciation, they threw in another E to make it KDs. And obviously it's an American-based company. And you might consider that KDs are the pinnacle of um, modern railway couplings and I kind of understand that and for those who've never seen KDs um, they are what we know as a buckeye or a, um, a knuckle coupler that is they kind of go together like this and KDs are apparently have a a breaking strain of 12 pounds which is a phenomenal weight for these tiny little um, metal couplings so where do we go from here? Well, I'm going to split the, the, the video into two. So we'll, uh, first we'll deal, deal with uh, KD couplings that go into small um, boxes and the second ones will, which will go into, as we know, NEM sockets. So let's crack on. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. I notice that actually only about 25% of my viewers do. And also, if you click the little bell icon, then you'll get a notification when the next video is released. Now the choices available are absolutely phenomenal and this is a number 146. It's a standard head metal whisker coupler and it's a, known as a long centre set shank. Now the shanks come um, in this particular, um, the, the non-NEM types, in um, three different sets. There's a centre set, which is these, if I can pull one of these out. And I'm unsure exactly how well we'll be able to zoom into this. So this is a, uh, a long centre cent center set shank. And if I use a pointer of this little cocktail stick, if you can see that, um, it's centre because the coupling itself is in line with the shank. If the coupling was higher, it would be an overset, and if it was lower, it'd be an underset. That way, depending on the height of your wagon, you can then um, get this set to the right height um, so that all your couplings are set at the right height and I'll show you the gauge they use shortly. Um, and this has two small whisker springs and I don't know if you can see those. Um, and with the 146 you get four to a packet. I've used two and these are the remaining uh, gearboxes that you pop these into. Now hopefully if I pop this coupling into this gearbox and just hold it in place and then hopefully you can see the effect of those whisker springs it centralizes um, the coupling and then all you do is obviously take the other half pop it on the top and then screw it uh, or glue it or so somehow get it onto your wagon but there is a hole running straight through these um, this you could screw them in so what comes in the packet, so that was 146, the, uh, the, the long centre set shank couplings. So you get four of these, the actual couplings themselves. You obviously get um, the eight cases, four bases and four tops. And you also get a couple of spare springs. I don't actually know if you can see those springs on the end of there. Um, but 
in the knuckle coupling itself there is a tiny spring which keeps it closed um, and it, that kink that has been known to pop out so they supply you with replacement springs. In the many years that I've had these I've only ever known one spring to come out but I'm sure um, other people will prove me wrong. So that's the guts of this then you have the, sh the, the shank that couples uh, to the locomotive then you get the buckeye connector you get the jaw and the spring and then this thing here is known as the pin and this is um, how you utilize uh, uncoupling of these uh, uncoupling of these couplings that sounds strange isn't it but there we go um, yeah so where do we go from here well you then need to get your wagon to line up to find out which um, coupling you require so we'll flip back to a wagon and I'll show you then how we work it out. Now here's an old Backman TTA wagon and it doesn't come with any M couplings. So what I've managed to do is um, secure one of those boxes to the underside with a little crosshead screw. And there hopefully you can see uh, the KD coupling all in with its uh, spring loaded fashion. I mentioned that the cranks come in various lengths, but also um, that you get underset, centre set and overset jaws. Now this one, as you can hopefully see, is lower than the box and that's known as an overset, which kind of seems the wrong way around. But if you imagine that the box is over the top of the coupling, then this is an overset. Um, and if it was higher, then it would be an underset, or the simple one would just be an under, uh, a centre set. Now, to make sure you've got the coupling at the right height, they manufacture these little gauges. Um, the metal ones, I'm not too sure are available anymore, but this is a little plastic one, and you just slot it onto your tracks, offer up your wagon, and it measures it in two different ways. First thing it does is make sure that the jaws actually line up and this one does perfectly but also the fact that the pin which uh, the which is how you do the magnetic uncoupling shouldn't strike this piece of plastic on the front because if it strikes there then you know um, you're going to have problem with points and things and you need to bend it up uh, there are a couple of ways of bending it up you can actually invest in their own pair of pliers which probably isn't the cheapest way of doing it um, but um, it's what I did um, just so we can sort of show you the options that are available. I'm sure you could, uh, you know, use something else, but um, I think these are the best way um, without damaging the magnetic pin. So once you've decided that your gauge is right, um, then what do you need to do then? Now I've glued into the centre of the track um, the number 308 magnetic uncoupler and if you get one of these just pop it in the track make sure that it sits squarely and obviously that the wagons will run across without um, it being impeded if it wasn't straight obviously one disadvantage with these is you can't have them on a curve and when you run the wagon across it the coupling moves because of the magnet's effect on the um, the curved pin so if I take these wagons to one side and couple them up and then push them straight over, everything's fine. And if I pull them back the other way, they don't uncouple. But if I go back and then stop on the magnet, they uncouple. If I now push it, they won't couple up. And I can actually just push these along as far as I want, stop and come back because the way the jaws work is they don't recouple once they're in the uncoupled position. Now I go back, I can pick up the wagon straight away as it recouples. And that's the simplicity really of uh, the KD system. Now I did mention that this particular coupling was had an overset. That is the fact that the gearbox is over the top of the um, coupling, I, it's higher than it, whereas an underset, then the, the box would be lower. But also, there's different crank lengths. There's long, medium and short. So which one ought you to buy? Well, the way I've kind of worked it out is that 
the back of the coupling ought to be in line with the buffers and that kind of works for me and that will go around a second radius curve. I don't necessarily have second radius curves but they may well end up um, under a, a tunnel area so that's what I thought would be the, probably the best thing to do. I don't have any first radius curves um, so that kind of sort of makes sense and um, as you've seen them when they're together they look quite reasonable. So it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a decent compromise um, to that end. Now if you watch the last video you'll realise that I have an unnatural yearning for these uh, Freightliner wagons. But the, with these dreadful uh, tension lock couplings, of which several American people have turned around and said um, the toy-like couplings, and they are absolutely appalling, well with my model makers scale ruler from Expo drills, when I measure the, the, the separation between these two, it's six and a half feet. Whereas, if I switch these over to KD couplings, then the distance between them then is a mere four feet. And of course, they look so much better. However, because they're such a, a low running wagon, I've had to cut off the uncoupling pins, but because they come in rakes of five, that's not such a problem. I have thought of coupling them even closer together um, to try to get them to kind of round about two feet, but we are where we are. But I kind of like them, they look okay, um, but the compromise was, of course, the fact that I couldn't, um, I couldn't have the uncoupling pin, pins just because um, there is no KD coupling which would allow it to, to, to rise up that distance. It's just with a plain construction. But because they come in rakes of five, I don't need to uncouple them anyway. But I've reached a reasonable compromise um, using these, um, how would you call it, these whisker type couplings. And then in, in close up, you can see there the uh, gearbox pocket is again just glued to the underside of the bogey works perfectly. Well that sort of wraps up the gearbox type KD coupling. Um, one thing worth mentioning is that number 1030 is a, a starter pack and within that you get um, the little gauge type thing. Um, I think you get the um, uh, magnetic uncoupler and you also get um, an array of couplings so you do have the four uh, the three different heights the center set under set and over set and also um, long medium and short type shanks so it gives you a, a feel for what's available and they all kind of make sense from those couplings which ones you require on your various wagons um, I'm afraid, please don't ask me which coupling goes on which wagon because I really don't know. Um, but there are some interesting uh, options out there um, and there are loads of YouTube videos out there. I think the one thing I, you can be sure on is that an HST, sorry, a Hornby current HST set takes a number five coupling. Um, I'm not going to swear by that, but that's what other people have said in videos and I will buy some of those in the not too distant future. So there we go, That's the, uh, that really sums up those, uh, those type of couplings. So it's time to move on to the NEM pockets. There's another challenge. Now it might be news to you, as it certainly was to me, that um, in the States they don't have NEM pockets. I think it's purely a kind of a, a European only um, standard. And um, the translation kind of works out into normal European modelling standard and it's NEM 362 and 363 and I'd like to be able to turn around and say that that must specify the exact size of the pocket and the height of it and everything else but if you know anything about couplings in this country then nothing could be further from the truth. But KD have risen to the cha challenge as it were and for us they make um, numbers 17, 18, 19 and 20 um, uh, numbered couplings and th those couplings don't have um, like the previous whisker types they don't have a set i.e. there's not a underset or an overset or a center set 
all it really is is short medium long and believe it or not extra long so you can gauge the gap between your wagons it all kind of makes sense then so if there is no uh, set i.e over and under then you just hope that all the pack all the pockets were dead right and therefore you pop these in and everything's good to go nope think again let's have a look at some examples so here are two backman wagons this one's a vented sort of fruit van and the other one's a 16 ton slope sided mineral wagon both nice little models and when you convert them to kds pop them together beautiful however that's not the whole story because if i lift this one out of the way and then bring into play the gauge as you can see it's way too high and these aren't the only two wagons there are numerous wagons out there that suffer the same issue i know in recent years dapple have always been a victim of uh, chastisement let's say so this is the dapple gunpowder wagon bring him on fits perfectly so i could also pull up another wagon from dapple that doesn't work or a locomotive that doesn't work and of course locomotives are the real problem of course it's worth mentioning that one of the things we like about kds is their enhanced uncoupling system and of course these two wagons with their coupling set at the wrong height now won't trigger uh, on top of an uncoupling magnet i could of course bend um, the uh, the pins down so that they will uncouple but you know the, the fact is i can't really couple them up to anything else so what can we do to alleviate this problem because certain locomotives can't be converted, I found myself having to convert uh, vans or, in this case, these uh, blue circle cement wagons so that this lead vehicle has a KD on one end and a tension lock on the other. Because, quite simply, this Backman warship can't be converted to, uh, to KDs because it doesn't have an NEM socket so the only way to do it is to start cutting it around um, and introducing a bit of super glue and I didn't particularly want to do that to this loco of course you can then make up a complete train but fundamentally when you want to split the train it's not a case of just lifting up one wagon of course you're back to the usual gag of trying to get the tension lock couplings apart the problem doesn't end there either because some of these tension lock couplings such as on this other third cement wagon this one has a bit of a problem because it keeps dropping down and hopefully that you can see that it's loose and of course, therefore, it has to be glued in position, which might cause you problems in the future. If you want to resell your stock, of course, um, you know, people don't want to buy stuff that's covered in glue. Um, and then, of course, because it drops down, it then won't line up properly. So, that, so now it doesn't want to go across here because it's dropped down and you can see it banging against there. And then, of course, with, if I was to bring on the gauge, And now it's far, whoops, sorry. Let's get the other side of there. And it's far too low. So these are the problems that you're faced with with NEM couplings in the UK. Of course, where there's a will, there's a way. And this is a very old Hornby 16 ton mineral wagon. Built long before the days of NEM pockets but are fitted KDs of course they don't move there's no spring uh, action box under here but by just whacking a KD taking the old coupling off and putting a KD on it does function quite well 
or when I say quite well, I mean it uncouples and does all its all its stuff as the same as any other uh, would do. And because I've sort of botched it myself, it should be at the right height and whether it uncouples now or totally embarrasses me, yeah, it works. Um, so there are kind of ways around this, but it's all, I, I get it because it's historical, we are where we are, but for the big names such as Hornby, Backman, Dapo and Hellion to bring out rolling stock today that doesn't have any M pockets set at the right height to accommodate KDs, it's dreadful. And then you start to realise that perhaps the reason they're doing it is just to make you buy their own stock. Now what I'd like to see is when other YouTubers who do the unboxings and the comparisons, perhaps these guys should actually um, do a review that this, this item does or doesn't um, have compatible NEM pockets that will accommodate KDs. I haven't emphasised it enough really, the fact that when you take your rolling stock on and off the, your layout, to just lift one up um, from these KDs is an absolute gift. It really is um, a, a huge advantage rather than trying to uncouple you know, a long rake of coal trucks or whatever. But that is one um, asset for the KD that uh, shouldn't be underestimated. Now taking this technology a stage further, in this Western I have a version 5 ESU chip but it works just as well with version 4 or version 5 sound or non-sound chips and that is it can carry out something called an uncoupled shuffle. Now if we take this Western over the top of the uncoupling ramp And then if I press F9 on the controller, hopefully you should hear um, an uncoupling sound and also you should get this shuffle. Then I'm free to move the locomotive away. The uncoupled shuffle was showed to me by David Townend down in McKinley Railway and I work down there occasionally putting together their videos and there should be a link here um, to David's uh, channel. It's a very big, enormous, involved, uh, elaborate extravaganza really. It really is a, a beautiful construction and it's still developing so please take a look at that channel. Um, and he does, you know, specialise in things like uncoupled shuffles and, and all those kind of um, very in-depth electronics aspects, if that kind of floats your boat. But there we are. One thing I haven't spoken about today is price and, you know, even the simplest of wagons. You know, these things can cost you, you know, 15 to 20 pounds a pop, you know, just for a, you know, a two axle wagon. So how much do KD couplings cost? Well, you get a kind of a a bag of couplings which is you know 18s um, and there's four couplings in there enough to do two wagons and they're around about four pounds fifty or thereabouts you can buy them in bulk which isn't necessarily the best thing to do but so four pound fifty to do two wagons so two pound twenty five doing hard maths in public um, on top of everything now if you're going to do a rake of 50 coal trucks that's kind of a lot of money um, so, you know, you see, you, you buy with care, but there are some clear advantages to having KDs, such as the uncoupling. And you can also buy um, an electromagnetic uncoupler, which goes underneath the track. The other two things I need to mention, I'll just refresh those, those um, pliers that I mentioned earlier um, to help curl the, um, the magnetic um, pin. And also there is a lubricant and that's a sort of a graphite kind of powder that KD make to, uh, to free up any sort of snagging of, of the mechanism. Um, and it is, it's, it is just a powder, it's not really a, a, a grease as, as such, but um, when you need it, you know, you've got it. 
KDs, love them or hate them. I kind of like them, I do. I know they're not that prototypical, they're certainly much better than the traditional British uh, tension lock couplings, which I'm almost embarrassed, you know, to talk to um, other people about, you know, people who model American HO and that kind of thing. They are absolutely appalling. And to think that this country started in model railways and yet we've been overtaken by, you know, kind of almost every nation that's out there. KDs are a standard sort of proprietary make of coupling. So where do we go from here? Well, there are clearly other things, or other, you know, other sorts around. There are keen couplings, there are Spratt and Winkle couplings, um, and I shall look at those in the next video, which will be episode three, which we are around about in a few weeks' time. So hopefully you'll join me for that. So, in the meantime, I'd like to thank my patrons very much indeed. It's their support that helps me buy all these bits and bobs to show you, um, you know, the alternatives that are available in Model Railways. And so don't forget to subscribe, and there should be a video here and here for you to watch. In the meantime, take care, thanks a lot, and bye-bye.